blissful morning everyone. So, ang i-discuss ko natin ngayon ay ang Isenck's Biologically Based Factor Theory. So, after nitong seminar na to, ay kunin nyo yung certificate sa link na naka-assign dito sa video na to at the same time, i-edit nyo ang name nito. At may QR code yon na makikita kung legit talaga dahil makikita nito na ito ay link sa aking account. Without further ado, so let's go! Isenck's Biologically Based Factor Theory. So, ang i-discuss natin ngayon, number one, view of human nature. Number two, implications of biological theories. Number three, psychotherapy assessment tools. Number four, criticism of theory at ang summary. So, ang perspective ni Heinz Isenck ay biological. So, tinawag niya itong Isenck's Biologically Based Factor Theory. At ang kanyang view ng human nature na ang personality ay biologically based at ang personality trait natin o personality traits natin ay nag-include ng dimensions ng psychoticism, extroversion, and neuroticism na ma-measure na ito sa pamagitan ng personality questionnaire. So, number two question natin. Implications of biological theories. So, merong tatlong biological basis na topic ni Hans Eysen. Number one, biological basis of extroversion. Number two, biological basis of neuroticism. Number three, biological basis ng psychoticism. Ang number three question naman natin na a-answer rin ay ang psychotherapy assessment tools. Ano yung mga psychological assessment na ginawa ni Hans Eysen? Number one, Molesley Personality Inventory or MPI. Number two, ASEN Personality Inventory, EPI. Number three, ASEN Personality Questionnaire, EPQ. Number four, ASEN Personality Questionnaire Device, EPQR. So ano ba yung mga criticisms ng theory ni Hans Eysen? Number one, para sa generation and research, high naman. So, number two, falsifiable, moderate to high. Number three, organized knowledge, high. Guide ng actions ng practitioners, low. Internally consistent ba siya, equivocal or open for interpretation. And number six, parsimony, high. So, ano ba yung unang katanungan? Ano yung view ng human nature ni Hans Eysen? So, sa kanya, ah, uh, Biological Based Factor Theory, ayon sa kanya, foundation of personality is biological and genetic forces. So, meaning to say, individual differences sa personalidad ng mga tao were biological and not merely psychological aspects of personality. Ang sabi niya, genetic differences ay naglilid sa structural differences ng central nervous system. At ang central nervous system, including yung brain structures natin, hormones, neurotransmitters, at ang mga differences ng biology natin ay nagli-lead sa differences sa tatlong personality natin, yung extroversion, neuroticism, and psychoticism. So ayon sa kanya, may tatlong dimension ng personality. At ito ay bipolar sa so, first end, yung extroversion, and sa second end naman yung introversion. Tapos, second na dimension ay neuroticism at ang other end niya ay stability. And pangatlo ay psychoticism at ang other end niya ay super ego. So, ano ba ang mga qualities ng mga taong matataas na extroversion? So, ito ay sila ay sociable, impulsive, uh, mahiling mag-joke, joke, meron silang jocularity, lively sila, optimist, and quick-wittedness. On the other hand, sa loob naman sa extroversion, I think yung mga introverts. So, they tend to become quiet, passive, unsociable, careful, reserved, thoughtful, pessimistic, peaceful, sober, sober, and controlled. So, di ka naman tayo sa second dimension sa neuroticism. So, yung mga taong mataas sa neuroticism, sila yung mga anxious, hysterical, nag-react sila emotionally, overreact. Sa low neuroticism na manner stability, sila naman yung merong sense of well-being, freedom from upset, emotionally stable, and easygoing. So, sa third dimension ay ang psychoticism. So, ang mga taong mataas ang psychoticism ay mataas ang anxiety level nila at prone sila sa hysteria, 
egocentric din sila, non-conformant sa mga law o mga rules, aggressive sila, impulsive and hostile. On the other end naman, super ego, oh, ang mga taong mababa yung psychoticism, sila yung mga taong warm, caring, cooperative, and nagkoconform sa social norms. So, ang sabi ni Hans Eysenck, merong evidence sa biological basis ng personality natin. So, meron siyang criteria na biological basis ng personality. So, number one, temperament daw natin ay ang biologically based tendency natin na mag-behave sa particular ways mula pagkabata natin. Number two, para ba unawaan natin yung heredity factors ng personality and behavior natin, ang mga psychologists ay pumupunta sa behavioral genetics or ito yung scientific study ng role ng heredity sa ating pag-ukali. At ibig sabihin nito ay pinag-aaral na ng heritability or yung extent na kung saan ang characteristics na isang tao ay influenced ng genetics. Third biological aspect ng personality natin ay na-assess using brain imaging techniques. Ito yung electroencephalography or EEG and functional magnetic resonance imaging or fMRI. So ito yung EEG and ito naman yung fMRI. So sa Eisen's factor theory, so based ito sa psychometric and biological components. So, ang sabi kasi ni Isaac na kung purely nagre-relate lang tayo sa psychometric tools o psychological test na i-measure ang structure ng human personality, kulang yun. And yung personality dimensions derive sa factor method o factor analytic method. Wala meaning unless talaga is related siya sa biological basis na supported ng evidence. So, ano yung mga criteria para makuha ni Hans Eysenck yung tatlong factors? So, number one, psychometric evidence for the factors existence must be established. So, kaya meron siyang mga psychological test. Number two, factor must also possess heritability and must fit an established genetic model. Number three, factors must make sense from a theoretical view. So, si Eysenck kasi dinedak ang ginamit niyang method ay deductive method ng investigation. Nagsimula siya sa theory, tapos uh, deductive method hanggang makakuha siya ng mga data na consistent sa kanyang theory. And lastly, yung factor na yon kailangan merong social relevance. So, pinapost niya rin ang hierarchy ng behavior organization. So, ayon sa kanya, merong apat na hierarchy yung pag-uugali natin, yung behavior organization natin. Sa pinakamababang level ay ang specific acts or cognitions. Ito yung mga individual behaviors natin, thoughts, na pwede maging karakteristik o hindi ng isang tao. Number two, yung second level naman are habitual acts or cognitions na responsible. And ito yung mga responses natin na similar sa mga conditions, iba't ibang conditions. Number three, traits naman, ating semi-permanent personal dispositions and ito yung defined in terms of significant intercorrelations between hab different habitual behaviors. So, lastly, number four, types or super factors. Ito yung made up ng several interrelated traits. Kung bakit natin, ito yung behavior na specified from specific behaviors, habitual responses, traits, and types. So, yan ay mga the factor analyze yung mga behaviors na yan hanggang makaka-come up ng type. Halimbawa, introversion. Specific habits sa introversion, um, gusto mag-solo, mag-iisa, gusto uh, mag-aral sa library. So, habits naman, ano naman habits ng introvert? Keeps at schoolwork, persists with hobbies, finishes a job, studies alone, turns down invitations, work on hobbies alone. And if you doctor analyze yan, para mga come up with traits, so from habits, nakakuha tayong traits of persistence, social shyness, and factor analyze ulit, ito nakakuha ng nakakama with the type of introversion. So, 
Ayon kay Isaac, sa biologically based factor theory, may dimensions ng personality at tatlo lang daw yun. Ito ang extroversion, neuroticism, and psychoticism. Pero hindi niya naman sinabi na hindi pwedeng dagdagan. So open siya sa mga critics and kung madadagdagan, why not? Ito yung hierarchical structure ng pen or psychoticism, extroversion, and neuroticism. So makita nyo, yung tatlong yun, yung pen, ay bipolar, meaning to say extroversion sa so one side, introversion on the other, so opposite poles sila. Factor N naman, neuroticism, at one pole, stability on the other pole, and lastly, psychoticism naman, sa one pole and super ego at the other pole. So number two, ano may mga implications ng biological theories ni Hans Eisen? So ayon sa kanya, may biological basis ang personality. So meron tayong from genetic personality determinants in DNA natin. Ito yung mga distal antecedents natin, mga nabamana natin. Proximal antecedent, ito yung meron tayo currently biological intermediaries, limbic system arousal natin, and ito ay nag-interact uh, nag sa ating psychometric rate constellation na psychoticism, extroversion, neuroticism, na nag-interact naman sa proximal consequences natin. Ito yung mga current na experiences natin, or pwede rin sa experimental studies like conditioning, sensitivity, vigilance, perception, memory, reminiscence, and so these are consequences, ano yung mga pwedeng mangyari in the future link sa ating mga factors na nabagit kanina. Ito yung social behavior. Ito ay pwedeng sociability or criminality, creativity, psychopathology, sexual behavior. So, ito yung model ng major components ni ASENG's theory of personality. So, ito na, biological basis ng extroversion. Sa so, cortical arousal. So, meron daw differences sa cortical arousal, ang introverts and extro extroverts. So, ang sinasabi, ang extroverts daw ay may lower level ng cortical arousal, pero meron silang higher sensory threshold. Meaning to say, meron silang lesser reaction sa sensory stimulation. So, ito ay napatunayan sa active discovery learning kasi mas nagiging active sila kapag uh, exciting yung klase. And bababa na may performs nila pag monotonous task o paulit-ulit and boring yung topic or yung lesson. Ito ay na-monitor via EEG. So, ang introverts naman daw, meron silang high level of higher level of arousal. And as a result, meron silang lower sensory threshold. Kaya na-experience sila ng greater reaction sa sensory stimulation. So, mas nakaka-perform sila sa passive learning or passive reception learning. At pagtataka kayo na ang mga extroverts, nakakapag-aral sila na maigi pag may music, nakakapag-perform sila sa Ravens Progressive Matrix Test ng maayos. Pero pag mga introverts na laman, ayaw naman nila na may music kasi nag-discourage sila or nag-destruct sila sa music. So, ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng cortical arousal? Ito yung mga activation ng reticular formation sa brain natin. So, ang cortical arousal natin, ito yung increase ng wakefulness natin, vigilance, muscle tone, heart rate, and ventilation natin. So, ito yung reticular activation system. So, ascending reticular activating system, ito yung network of fibers na nag extend from the spinal cord papuntang thalamus. Ito yung stimulate ng cortex natin and ito yung mediate ng states of arousal natin. Involved din ang reticular activating system sa learning, conditioning, wakefulness, attention. So, anong difference ng ascending reticular activation natin sa extroversion and introversion? Sa introvert naman, uh, higher level of aras sila higher level, tapos lower level ng threshold nila. So, meaning to say, kapag madali sila ma-overstimulate, so tend to be quiet, introspective, reserved, excitement decreases performance, so they di distrust sila sa impulsive decisions, and matas yung sensitivity nila pain, so stimulus shy sila. So, sa extrovert naman, lower level of cortical arousal naman sila, pero mataas yung threshold nila. Meaning to say, 
uh, outgoing sila, marami silang friends, gusto na ng party, nag-excite, nag-crave sila for excitement, impulsive, uh, may napaperform nila na maayos kapag na-excite sila, manataas yung tolerance sila sa pain, stimulus hungry sila. So, meron naman tayong pangalawa, biological basis of neuroticism. Ito naman yung about sa limbic system. So, nag-agree si Hans A. Sensei that this is a stress model ni Mill, Buller, and Rosenthal. So, meaning to say, kapag ang tao ay merong predis- predisposition sa psychological disorder like may genes, uh, meron siyang uh, biological a uh, predisposition, ibig sabihin, konting stress lang or bolder stress, may tendency silang makapag-come up o mag-result ng psychological disorder. And according to the biological basis of neuroticism ni Hans Eisen, may overactive amygdala ang isang tao mataas ang neuroticism. So, ito, a hyperactive din yung limbic system. Kasi yung limbic system, related just sa emotional arousal. And nag a siya through the autonomic nervous system natin and nag activate ng glands, muscles, heart rate, respiration, perspiration, etc. So, ang mga tao, nag-differ sila ng activation thresholds. So, meaning to say, biological basis of neuroticism... Limbic system, sa limbic system, hyperactive ang big dala. So, meaning to say, hypersensitivity din sa negative emotional experiences. And nakakaroon mo sila ng study na mataas yung um, galvanic skin conductance activity or pinagpapawisan yung mga taong nanonood ng mga crimes, yung mataas yung neuroticism nila, pinagpapawisan sila. Tapos, pag sinasabi naman dito na although mataas yung limbic system activity, mababa naman yung threshold ng limbic system. So, talagang hypersensitive sila sa mga negative emotional experiences. So, meron din naman palang biological basis ang psychotism. So, according to Hayes Einstein, meron imbalances ng serotonin and testosterone. Ang testosterone, ito yung male hormone, di ba? Ang serotonin naman, ito yung happy hormone o yung good neurotransmitter. So, ito yung identified na dalawa na biological basis ng psychoticism. High psychoticism daw ay related sa tough-minded and cold even sa mga kamag-anak and may cr- criminal tendencies sila. So, meaning to say imbalances ng serotonin and testosterone may predispose an individual to have a high psychoticism level. So, psychoticism, ano yung mga um Makikita na natin sa mga taong natataas ng psychoticism, egocentric sila, cold, non-conforming, impulsive, hostile, aggressive, suspicious, psychopathic, and antisocial. On the other hand, sa mga taong may low psychoticism or bantas ng superego, eh siling mga altruistic, highly socialized, empathic, and caring, cooperative, conforming, and conventional. So, according to Hans Eysen, ang ating factors ng personality ay three-fourth heredity and one-fourth no, environmental factors. Number three na question, ano yung mga psychotherapy assessment tools na ginamit ni Hans Eysen? So, may four na inventories na nag-measure na kanyang super factors. Number one, Monsty Personality Inventory and PI. Ito ang kanyang minimeasure ay extroversion and neuroticism lang. Sa ASA Personality Inventory naman, number two, dinagdagan niya ng lie detector. Number three, ASA Personality Questionnaire, EPQ. So, tatlo na ito, pen, psychoticism, extroversion, and neuroticism. And lastly, number four, ASA Personality Questionnaire, revised, EPQR. So, kompleto na to May pen at may light detector din. So, ito yung questions ng ASIN Personality Questionnaire Revise, EPQR. There you go. So, number four question. Ano yung mga criticisms ng theory ni ASIN na biologically based theory? Number one, siya na research, very high siya. Quasi-viable ba? Moderate to high rating. Organized knowledge high. Guide 
the actions of practitioners low, internally consistent, equivocal or open to interpretation, parsimony high. So, ito naman, additional points lang. Ano yung concept ng humanity ni Hans Eysen? Determinism ba siya o more on free choice? So, deterministic siya. Teleology versus causality. So, more on causality siya. Conscious versus unconscious determinants of behavior. Unconscious, biological versus social influences. Both naman siya. Individual differences versus similarities. So, more on individual differences siya. So, ito yung mga key terms and concepts. So, run through ko lang siya. There you go. And summary, ito yung diniscuss natin ngayon. Thank you for listening. Ito yung mga references. So, there you have it. So, paki-click na lang yung link para sa inyong certificate and comment down below kung ano yung gusto nyo pang i-discuss natin at makakatulong to sa review ng psychometrician and psychology for the board exam. Thank you so much. Have a great day.